Okay. Good evening. Today is uh, Wednesday, February 9th. This is the Norfolk Conservation Commission. We will not be on Zoom tonight. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. So we are in person and we do have an audience. So we'll begin with uh, public hearings. The first one is 5 Hanover Street, NOI 240640. They've requested a continuance to the March meeting. If I could get a motion for that. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions, comments? Okay, we'll do it at 7.01. Keep it the same time. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes. Uh, second one is uh, 120, 124 MacArthur Avenue. That's requested to be continued to 39 also. And we'll do that at 7.05. If I could get a motion for that. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes. I don't think that we've ever had a public hearing where everything's being continued. Uh, Mirror Lake, NOI, uh, request. Uh, good point. Uh, let's go to the minutes for approval. Did everybody read their minutes? Yep. Any questions, comments, additions? No, that's good. Okay, I'll take a motion to approve that. Also, and I second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, passes. Uh, got a couple of minutes. Uh, Norfolk Landfill, the January report. Um, do you have any comments, Alan? No, it doesn't look like they pumped anything in January. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, We'll leave it at that. We'll just put it in the file, Elaine. And two more minutes. Uh, the annual report, did you print that out or did you put it on? You got my today, right? Right. Do you have it on your computer? Uh, yes. Do you want to quick throw it up? Um, if not, then we can hold it. Okay. Okay. Never mind then. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll go to a new old business. Uh, REI license agreement. It's in with the uh, lawyers now. Um, Jim had a comment about it, which was good. Um, <clears throat> a good ad additive to it. And we've told them also they have to get an agreement with uh, Rentham State School for the parking lot. So uh, that's continuing. Hopefully in March, the, uh, everything will be done and we may be able to go ahead and have it approved. The only comment I had on that was they listed it as mountain bike. Yes. They should say probably add non-motorized mountain yeah. bike. Yeah. Just to make absolutely clear. Or we put in the agreement that. No motorized vehicles. No, you know, the type Metal no bike. mechanical yeah. or motorized yeah they don't, I don't vehicles of any I don't type think they allowed. use those but just are you to be safe you including e-bikes uh -huh. See, that's yeah I wouldn't I would include e-bikes because yeah. that's motorized so yeah. I mean it is mechanical <laughs> yeah. yeah so well because we we've, we've had people come in and show interest that wanted to use a motorized bike before <laughs> yeah. on the trails and we know People have used them and yeah. they so make ruts and. <coughs> Did you get the email from um, Rich this morning? About? At 11 with revisions um, to the REI license. I'll I saw, I didn't see. I'll pull it up on the yeah, screen. Yeah, I, I have it. Okay, do you want me to pull it up? Or? No. Okay. There has to be some blanks. Yeah, they wanted uh, yeah, to know how many. Things have to be filled up. So, uh, yeah, we'll take it up in. March, but in the meantime, I'll come in the office and we can go over with Rich and get it settled. And I think they're looking for a bike on a, a, a number of how many can be out there at one time. Yeah, as well. I yeah. think they're looking at for from us. Yeah. So I'll, I'll call the regional manager and talk to her and. <clears throat> 
try to figure out what exactly their classes are, if they're at 10. Mm -hmm. or, right. or is it an open thing? Yeah, yeah. we don't want 50 bikes at right. a time. Right, right. That's right. Because yeah, they can't take over the trail. Right, right. Yeah, and I think that's why I wanted to limit them, because they were claiming there'd be like only five or six people per instructor, so we want to <laughs> limit it so that you know, they don't show up with 30 people and then our residents can't use it. Right. Yeah, right. I remember they had mentioned that they were doing small numbers. And yes. Yeah, that's what they claim and, you know. Just oh, we to wanna, sure. Yeah, put a cap yeah. on it. So, <laughs> you know, and they're, you know, from what they were saying, it looked like they could have a group from another town or another store. So you could have Lint Farm sign up at three different locations. So, in essence, you could end up with three different groups coming to Lint Farm at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So... And it's best to have it in writing, and then we can say, nope, this is it per day. You violated it. And yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it says there's, it, it accounts for the number of participants, but maybe you could have the number of classes, too, per day that would yeah. visit yeah. it. Okay. Something yeah. to that effect. Right. And then you could cap that participant number pretty, pretty low. Yeah. Like Do they have the number on there? Or no, they're just no, no, it's blank. Blank from us. So, yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'll, those are good points. Uh, number of classes, I wouldn't have, that didn't come to my mind right away. Yeah. So, but that is good. Yeah, it, and it should be at at one time. So maybe two classes a day, max. Um, and they Six can't be, eight. and you know, a maximum of 10 people on, on the trail from a company at a time. So yeah. that way they can't say, well, I got two classes of 20, 10 people each, yeah. right. and they're running at the same time. Right, yeah. right. So, yeah. And I don't think it would be out of place to say you get one class a day. I don't think so. No. I think it's reasonable. They got a no, lot of places to allows, choose from. Because what you don't want is a Saturday when our residents want to use it, and it's one rate right after another. Yeah. Right. And then they don't feel that they're able to use the trail safely. So I I don't think it's. Okay. I mean, they're asking to use it if they wanted to do one a day. I don't think and, and we'll give it a trial. We can always change it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start and low and the duration of the course too. You may, you know, it's is it a three hour course? Yeah, he mentioned I thought an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. six people per class. Yeah. So I don't think it's really gonna be that bad, but we just like you said, we're gonna make sure we keep it to Well like uh, to your point, we don't want them to ride for half an hour, have a three hour picnic, <laughs> you know, ride again right. or yeah. You know, have different things throughout the day. Yeah, that may be right. We should limit it to two-hour window or something. Yeah, a two or three-hour window, yeah. and and then one class a day, maximum ten people per class, including the instructors. <clears throat> Let them. And then we definitely probably should have a paragraph in there. I mean, maybe there's a permanent paragraph that lists those things. Yeah. No more than ten people. Nothing motorized, no vehicles, bicycles, or anything to it that are motorized. Yep. Electric, gas, etc. How about a power wheelchair? Right. Yeah. So. How about a power wheelchair? No, you're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's a good point. Well, you got handicap issues yeah. too. I don't know if they have kids that come in that um, have. But then again, handicap. Any issues? Yeah. No, they probably don't. I wouldn't think so, but it's possible. You never yeah. know nowadays. But no, that's, uh, yeah, let's rewrite the contract, the agreement. Yeah, because I think having a section of the things that we definitely don't want. Yeah. So that we don't have to do it each time somebody yeah. different comes yeah. up. Yeah. We've got a permanent contract that states, all right, um, you know, like I said. No electric bike, they need, no motorized right. bikes. Yeah. And they need a separate contract for each thing they want to do. So if they want to do snowboarding, they need a whole separate contract. But in there, it would only be once a day, maximum 10 people. And once we get the first contract as a template, yep. yeah. you know. Well, I think we can tweak it as we go as well. Sure, exactly. It says we yeah. can terminate the contract yeah. at any time yeah. as well. Yeah. So right. then we could rewrite it. You're yeah. right. Yeah. But yeah, if we can have those in the front of it, so or in, in the body of it, then it, it goes a long way for future ones. Okay, we're after 710. Back to Mirror Lake. We did get the uh, DEP numbers. Anybody here from Mirror Lake? Holy cow. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, but Joe's not here, correct? Oh, I'm sorry. 
hiding behind the screen. Um, so we can take care of this today, if you'd like. Absolutely. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can't leave until the meeting's over. Uh, yeah, because the room will be empty. Do we have the <laughs> NOI <laughs> printed up, G Elaine? Um, I have one copy, sure. Yeah. I mean, the 138 pages. Yeah, just let, I just want to see. You want just the notice of intent? Yeah. Okay. And what has to be signed. Okay. I can get that for you. Yeah, we don't need the whole package. No. Because if we have that, then we can vote on it and... Mm -hmm. e You'd have to include the, the DEP number. Yeah. And the NOI. Which, right. Which we just put well, you know what? We can't vote on it because if we vote on it, we have to sign it within 21 days, right? Yeah. So we'd have to wait till next month to vote on it. I mean, we could clear everything up here and it'd just be a matter of us voting on it once the NOI is complete. Why can't we sign it? Is the NOI complete? It just doesn't have the DEP number on it. We, should, we can write that in. Yeah. Oh, okay, then if that's yeah. the case, then fine. Yeah, what I didn't want to do was vote on it, close the meeting, vote on it, and then and we then, don't do it, then yeah. we got to reopen the meeting. Yeah. In the meantime, do you have any questions or um, comments? I mean, I guess the question is, do you have questions? Do you want me to do a little presentation or? Yeah, give a little five-minute summary. Yeah, I mean, no, maybe I'll stand up here. And no, have you? There's a microphone. Are you? I don't think I need a mic if everybody can hear me. Well, yeah, it's for the people at home. Go ahead. Oh, I, I think we're not on Zoom, right? We're on TV. YouTube. We're, we're on, on TV. TV. Yep. Okay. We're on cable. Yeah, just introduce yourself and company. All right. I think it's working. It sounds like it is. Uh, my name is Joe Honorado with Water and Wetland. Uh, so we're the lake management company that uh, manages Mirror Lake. So historically, we've done work just in the Rentham portion. Uh, so Mirror Lake is about 66 and change acres, a little over 66. Only about eight acres is in the Norfolk portion, uh, just that northern portion. It kind of cuts off at the beach. And then on the east side, it goes right to Doug's house pretty much here. Um, so with that said, uh, we've been managing the Rentham portion. It's been managed for several years. It started off really as a bladderwort control program. So bladderwort is a native species. Um, gets these free-floating plants, flowers, either yellow or purple. Um, and it takes over. You know, it impedes on recreation and habitat and all these things. But it is native. Uh, so that was kind of the concern in the southern, most southern coves of Mirror Lake for several years. During that time, curly leaf pondweed was discovered and we kind of said, hey, curly leaf, it's invasive. Put a focus to it. The product that was used on the bladderwort was Diquad, which is also effective on curly leaf pondweed. So it actually kind of worked out, but the curly leaf pondweed was never the target. So curly leaf pondweed is invasive. And so what that means is it spreads very rapidly and it takes over and it impedes on the ecosystem and it outcompetes all your good plants that you want to have, right? So you know, the focus is never to eliminate vegetation, right? There's all your potamogeton species, your pond weeds, you know, these good plants that are great for fish cover and habitat. The goal is never to eliminate the go those. The goal is to manage the bad ones, you know, the invasive species or the species that have reached these nuisance levels while allowing some of these natives to flourish and, and really recolonize themselves, right? So. We always do this alternatives analysis and say, how can we be as selective as possible, right, during that process? So basically that was done on the Rentham portion. Um, you know, you eliminate mechanical control because it will spread the curly leaf pondweed. Curly leaf pondweed reproduces through what's called turions, which is a winter bud. So there's a seed bed there. They're viable for five plus years. The last thing you want to do is chop those up and spread them throughout the lake. I mean, that's really what's happened over the years. Um, so that's quickly eliminated. You know, you th see things like dash, so divers going down and hand pulling plants. It's just not feasible when you have acres and acres of these target plants. You know, there's mats you can put down, but the last thing you want to do is line this entire pond. You'd be killing all the vegetation. So ultimately, we land on, you know, EPA and mass approved herbicides and algicides. And so, you know, we kind of redid that alternatives analysis when we considered managing the Norfolk portion, which really stemmed from last year's survey so 2021 we went out to manage what we thought was going to be five acres of curly leaf pondweed in the rentham portion 
turned out there was 30 plus. We, we ended up managing about 30 acres on the Rentham side, and that was just the Rentham side, and the entire Norfolk portion was essentially covered. So that eight acres, right? So you can imagine you have a 66 acre water body, that alone is 38 acres of curly leaf pond weed cover. So it just shows you know, how quickly it spreads, how invasive it is, and how problematic it is, right? So not only is the lake virtually unusable over, under those conditions, I think I put some, some photos in the notice of intent of what the conditions were in June of last year, um, but just extremely bad, but it's also not good habitat, right? And it's taking out all those good pond weeds we just brought up. So the focus really in Norfolk is to kind of continue what we've been doing in Rentham, which is treating the curly leaf pond weed um, they also have lilies, which again are, you know, it's kind of like the bladderwort, right? They're native, but they can cause harm to the system, right? Especially when they get very dense, specifically those southern coves, which of course are in Rentham in Mirror Lake. But what happens is they shade out the sunlight, they limit oxygen transfer, and basically they can deplete dissolved oxygen, right? Which obviously fish need oxygen like we need oxygen. Um, and they also create monocultures, right? Because the plants beneath that canopy of lilies cannot get sunlight so you have kind of these, these dense lilies and the only things that can really survive under there are these horrible invasives because they can grow anywhere right so there is some selective lily management we did treat lilies last year honestly I don't think we're going to need to treat them uh, again this year lilies are a little bit different in that we can use a systemic product that gets down into the rhizomes and actually kills the plant providing carryover control whereas curly leaf pondweed you have, and actually Elaine just went by it. If you want to go back up just real quick. Um, so this was, this was the curly leaf pond weed distribution last year. So basically entire perimeter, and then there was this huge patch in the middle. So obviously Mirror Lake is, uh, it's pretty shallow. So the curly leaf pond weed was growing virtually everywhere. Um, and that kind of just stresses the importance of not leaving out that Norfolk portion, right? You're, you're harming the work that's been done in Rentham by leaving that out. And, you know, essentially you're, you're letting the Norfolk portion kind of go, you know, if, if you don't. So that's why we're here today requesting that. Um, DEP, of course, at the 11th hour issued a file number. They always take three weeks. Yesterday would have been three weeks, so they were three weeks in a day. Uh, their only comment, um, they did issue a comment. I just want to address that. So the one comment was just to be sure that we're consistent with Rentham, right? So we have this Rentham order of conditions. Um, so I know that order very well. So the two products on that are Diquat for the curly leaf pondweed and the bladderwort, which is approved in Rentham. And then for lilies, instead of a glyphosate-based herbicide, which we would typically use under those circumstances, Rentham had approved a product called ClearCast. So it's a Mazamox, uh, which is commonly used on water chestnut. We use it in town on Highland Lake, um, some other sites. So we use a Mazamox on the lilies in Mirror Lake. So that's consistent with the Rentham side as well. Yeah. So pretty much that's, that's the focus. I did put copper-based algicides on this notice of intent only because of the poor water clarity and poor water quality. And of course the curly leaf pondweed doesn't help that at all, but it's nutrient rich. We did some water testing and the, you know, the Friends of Mirror Lake are all here, a very active uh, group that's passionate about the health of the lake. Um, so water testing has been done the last several years, which is good at establishing trends and you know, kind of seeing where the water body's at from a health perspective. And so what that water quality really shows is that the pond is very eutrophic. So it's very, very high in phosphorus. Nitrogen honestly was normal, uh, but the phosphorus was, was high, if I remember correctly. And the water quality is in the notice of intent, but it was around 80 parts per billion, maybe slightly above 80 parts per billion. So what does that mean? Right, the EPA strives for 10 parts per billion. And so at about 25, 30 parts per billion, that's sufficient enough to stimulate really excessive plant and algae growth. And of course, you hear the terms HABs, harmful algae blooms, you see the news, lakes getting shut down due to cyanobacteria. So water clarity was very, very poor last year. You know, they definitely had some blooms going on at different times of the year. So we did put copper-based algicides in here just to have available as a tool, but those are really only used if there's a need for them, right? It's all based on monitoring. We go out, we do surveys. So those are really the three, you know, the three products, um, you know, and approaches for Mirror Lake, but very consistent to what's already been done. And, you know, we want to try and manage all that curly leaf pondweed, including on the Norfolk portion. So, you know, I welcome any questions uh, from the commission and then 
Well, I think I thank you all for coming because I remember some of you from coming before. And um, we've actually, David and I have been very forceful in, and we've talked at some of our meetings about this exact issue that we have in town because we're more of waiting till we're at almost a disaster area and then we treat it and then we wait and then we treat it again several years later. So we're actually in the midst of coming up with a listing of all our water properties and then coming up with a management plan going forward. So exactly what's here is we're the bad neighbor and you know the Rentham side has been being treated on a regular basis and it's not helping the lake by us not treating it on a regular basis and the same as what you're treating so that if you have something that's resistant to what you're using you can systematically use it on the whole entire lake <coughs> to eradicate whatever so I, I think from my opinion from all these different projects I've seen since I've been on the commission um, I think the approach of you know the I mean the the chemicals that are used you can only use what the state's already approved so it's not like we need to do any research of you know is this something you're getting at a local store or nothing like that it's all state managed the chemicals and you know we leave it to you to determine that you know what you think is best um, do you have a current contract with the town through CPC for Mirror Lake specifically yeah. uh, no I had sent I'd kind of worked through Doug here um, so there is one out there not not executed or anything like that but honestly it's it's pretty low dollar amount too just for the Norfolk portion yeah um, just because it's only eight acres in, in Norfolk so so there is one out there just not executed but you could use that contract or no what, what do you what, mean what what our yeah, so oh, we, oh, so okay. we typically contract with, with friends of Mirror Lake, right? It's a very okay. active group. And then they get funding from different places. Um, but I you know, I know Doug's been working yeah. probably with you and I think, you know, on multiple year pricing and he kinda does all the financials. We just kinda do the science part. So but we there is no contract with the town. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we're trying to be proactive in getting contracts on all of our water bodies to treat them on an annual basis and do a multi-year so um and just to make a point friends of mirror lake has no issue with doug surratt friends of mirror lake uh, we don't have any issue if you want to contract directly okay with with these guys we're we're just sort of trying to manage this part of it sure you know as best we can and how you want to contract that is is up to you okay well, that's yeah we don't want to disrupt anything at the moment so we'll let you continue and then when we're ready to execute a contract with a company then uh, we'll let you know and then it, so it'll be seamless and uh, everything gets treated when it's supposed to get treated um, in the current arrangement uh we proposed that it be done on the exact same day as we do the rentham sure. side and then uh, because there's a labor cost with them to come out multiple days, we're saving the town money by yeah. doing that. Yeah. Yep. Were you able to find an NOI or no? Yes. With this for the signature page? Uh, couldn't find the signature page. I didn't. I don't have the signature. Okay. Page. Well, unfortunately, we'll have to continue until next month because without our, we don't have an agent. So. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I just want to do I do just want to say Janet was great but Elaine's been been great to work with we were talked multiple times yeah. today about this file number so she's been great but too. some things like this is Janet would take care of it and then mm -hmm. um, so we do have somebody on a consultant basis so we'll have them draw it up uh, so we'll be ready for the March meeting and Perfect. that shouldn't impact mm -hmm. you at all right so you don't right. need me here or anybody no right? okay. no no, no. We'll, it'll be a basically a done deal Perfect. Um, so what we'll, yeah, so that's what we were kind of debating earlier is we'll close the meeting next month. Um, there won't be any difference from what we've talked about at this meeting. It's just a formality to get the paperwork set aside. So because if we 
I don't know if you heard, if we vote on closing the meeting and signing an NOI, we have to sign it within 21 days. And our meeting is further from 21 days. And if we don't sign it, then he has to apply to reopen a meeting. Yep. So, which may not come till April. Yeah, and, and Janet so. did that too. So, yeah, I, you know, yeah. it's pretty, it's almost commonplace in, in these days anyway. So, yeah. so you know, right. that's, that's fine. And if it, there's any questions in the meantime or anything like that, I'm happy to answer. Okay, but. we appreciate that. Um, so I'll take a motion to continue uh, Mirror Lake until uh, 7, 7, 10 next month. I make a motion to continue Mirror Lake until 7:10 on 3-9-22. Second. Well, so and I second. All any other comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, it passes. So we'll take care of it next month. But yeah, you don't have to be here. We'll just have the paperwork in order and uh, sign it, and then you'll be able to pick it up and the day after. And we'll we'll have to be in touch so that we you kind of guide us a little bit as to what your maybe what you're thinking yep, and so of what you typically would do if you wanted to handle all the town water bodies how you would yeah and i did yeah did you get all that i sent i sent david a massive email um we had this huge list of ponds going some of them were private yeah, some, well, were, were, some weren't even in, in north oh. Park, so so we <laughs> yeah. kind of crossed those off the list others were completely private which just doesn't, I mean, you could pay for them if you want, it just, I, it would be odd, right, if the yeah. town's paying for somebody's backyard pond. So um, so we crossed those off the list and narrowed it down to, I don't know, maybe there was five or six um, that kind of fit the description of, you know, town-owned or partially town-owned yeah. and, um, you know, actually in the town. So, and I sent over kind of process, budgets, things like that. So, you know, it, it's tough to, every pond is unique, right? It's always yeah. based on surveys. Right, curly leaf pondweed is managed very differently than fan wart. Some ponds, I mean, you look at them and you're like, this is a gem, keep it this way. There's no need to treat it, right? But should be surveyed annually so that if invasives do get introduced, they get caught early, you know, rather than... I, th I think that's part of it too, is yeah. that if you're in, we need, we need it set so that if we're in the middle of August and, you know, you see an algae bloom, you need to be able to treat it and we need to be able to pay it. Yep. So we need to be able to have the funds set aside so that we can actively yeah. do what we need to do. Cause I mean- Without delay. You get somebody right. fishing in a, in a lake with an algae bloom, then they're taking that over to Mirror Lake <laughs> and then fishing in Mirror Lake and now you have it in Mirror Lake. So by treating all of our water bodies together and a lot of our neighboring towns are already doing that, I think it's gonna help the situation for all of us. Yeah, and the biggest thing is having orders of conditions obviously in place too. I mean, I think that's a longer process than even generating a PO, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. so I think typically it would be multi-phase, right? Phase one is survey, get a grasp on what each pond needs. Algicides, like you mentioned, are always part of the program as necessary, right? Because you just never know. Mm -hmm. But then weed management is really specific to that water body. Oh. Right, and then you kind of jump into permitting. Then once you have that order, you know, and e there's even on-call contracts, right? Kind of if this, then that. Um, you know, the curly leaf, you know, it's going to need to be treated annually. It's one of those things. But say algae is a is a great, you know, example. It's a wild card. You just don't know. Um, there's other, you know, other plants that can be managed sy systemically. Yeah. So milfoil, fanwort, some of those, you can get multiple years of control. A little bit more expensive to do that, but you can, you can do that, you know. So, so everything is looked at uniquely. So I mean, and you know, really, you know, I, I gave David some budget numbers and things like that. But everything should really be surveyed, you know, professionally mapped, mm -hmm. and and kind of generate a management plan, and then it rolls right into permitting. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, we'll take the vote to. Uh, Continue this until 710 on the 9th. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, you have no, a question? No question, I'm sorry. I have a question for him. Could you identify yourself, please? Please? With the microphone, you need, yeah, state your name and address. Uh, Gerald Boucher. It's on. It's on. Gerald Boucher, uh, Mirror Lake, 23 Mirror Lake. My question is, last summer, 
there were many fish that died. Do you have any reason? And loaded with weeds to my area, because the current comes from my area. He's in the next step, up northwest corner. Up uh, northwest. In, in north. So that's, that's an area hmm. where the dock tree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess. Al it's also a very shallow area, so that could have to do with the fact that the weeds were choking everything out earlier in the year. I don't know. Yeah, so so I guess a few a few things with that, right? So we didn't treat Norfolk. So what you probably saw are untreated curly leaf pondweed. Are you putting in right. a fluid or a powder in the lake? Yeah, so it's it's a liquid and it's injected subsurface. So wouldn't that come with the current? To, uh, mer uh, mer uh, so with this with this product, probably not. Um, I mean, maybe slight concentrations, but not enough to kill anything. So there's different kinds of herbicides. There's contact herbicides and systemic herbicides. So systemics kick around for quite a while, typically, short of one. So they kick around and they'll move with the water, things like that. Whereas contact herbicide, so what we use in Mirror Lake is called Diquat. So it has a half-life of 24 to 48 hours, something like that. So very, very short and it stays put and it gets uptaken by the weeds very, very quickly. So the other thing too, to answer that question is we're treating in parts per billion concentrations. So for curly leaf pondweed, it's about a gallon of product per surface acre. So it's heavily diluted. So you're spreading just a, you know, a gallon across an entire acre. So it's not a lot of product. So once it leaves that area, most of it's already been uptaken by plants a as they're dying, right? And then anything that leaves that area is just a, almost a trace concentration, so not enough to kill anything. So my guess is what you were seeing is just live curly pondweed that should have been treated, you know, that we, we surveyed and saw but couldn't treat because we didn't have the permits that we're here today to get. Um, fish, you know, I, we didn't see any dead fish. I mean, I don't know if, if you did. I mean, you know, lots of times that's, uh, you know, if there was a... That would come to my area anyways. I'm yeah. House on the water. Yeah, I mean, sometimes what you see is spawning stress, um, you know, which is pretty common. The reason I'm asking is because I've been there 55 years, yep. and this is the first time I've seen so many dead fish in that area. Hmm. Well, July or August, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean... I mean, I'm just kind of... I don't yeah, know. yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be related to the treatment, right? I mean, all, all labels are followed. We didn't see any fish. We did multiple surveys. We didn't see any dead fish. So, you know, sometimes what you see, if it's just a handful or, you know, a half dozen or something like that, it's usually spawning stress related. So what was it, carp? Big carp. Okay, so big carp. Carps have, you know, a lifespan. So sometimes if it's massive carp, they could just be old, right? I mean, so something like that, potentially if they were stocked 20 years ago and they're all reaching the end of their lifespan, something like that, um, but not treatment related. So short of that, you know, spawning stress is, is most likely, but. Okay, I don't wanna hold this So, <laughs> yeah, so those are thoughts on that anyway. Thank you, Joe. Okay, so we'll take the vote to continue this until 7, 10 on the 9th. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So, yeah, and again, you don't have to be here. We'll Perfect. You have the paperwork ready and uh, get through it and be able to sign off on it, and then you'll be able to pick it up on the 10th. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Good. Thank you. I don't know why they said the So the next item is 54 <laughs> Cleveland <laughs> Street. Uh, the Certificate of <laughs> Compliance, do we have that? I am done. That's been delayed. Thank you guys. Okay. Yep. Uh, because they haven't been able to get out there. Because who of the who's weather. delayed at the builder? The snow. Or us? I think um, Rich wanted to go out. Somebody has oh, okay. to take a final look at it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So it takes us down to new old business, the annual report. Yes. Um, do you have that? So the other thing, did we send that out to everybody? Um, to Jim, yeah. I did. I but not think I to, sent it to the whole group. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you had added things out. Yeah, I edited this afternoon. Yeah, I was editing it a little bit. Um, hey, I'm just going to take, take it outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but the other thing is, of all the things, you don't have. No, I do. Oh, God. 
there, there's just a few minor edits to it. And then I had asked Elaine to check on the numbers for hearings and stuff like that. Yeah, which is what, um, actually, let me just pull up yours, because that's my old one. Well, I tell you what, instead of waiting, it, uh, oh yeah, we were supposed yeah. to vote on it. We, um, I don't know that it's something you need to vote on. Cause it, um, I tell you what, why don't you in the morning send it to everybody <clears throat> okay. and have a quick response and we'll make the changes and then I can approve it and we can send it up to Nancy, okay. the select board office. Yeah. Um, that will be the easiest thing, Elaine, I think. You sure? Yeah. Hang on. It'll only take a second. <laughs> Did you add anything about um, maybe what we're looking to do with the uh, the pond situation in town? No, should because this is, uh, that this be is, next year? that's next year. This is, yeah, a recap of last year. Okay. So we hadn't really started much of it this year. Yeah. Last year anyway. Let me see if I can, no, I don't want that. Come on. Sent. Karen, did it, did it, did it. No, I don't have it in here. Get it on my computer. Um, so yeah, we'll send it out in yeah any last minute corrections or whatever. I did do a send off for Janet. Okay, uh, Clark to Clark Street. Um, what do you mean it needs to be filed? They haven't completed any paperwork yet. They haven't turned in any paperwork. No. Oh okay. No. So we'll just keep it there. Is there anything else uh, anybody wants to bring up? 54 Cleveland Street, that's just delayed? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because of the snow, Rich hasn't been able to give a final. Oh, okay. On that, but so. what's he looking for, grass? <laughs> what, what, what went <laughs> on they keep continuing. That's a new that. house. It's a new house? Yeah. So it's what, septic system and stuff is the? Yeah. So that we'd have to wait until you can't May expect April. till May fifteenth. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, what? I'll ask Rich tomorrow. What he needs? Do they need the certificate in order to sell the property? Buy. Or yeah, if that they're trying to close, it by needs to get Oh yeah. Let me uh, text him. Oh. <clears throat> what number is that? Uh, Fifty-four. And Marta's on vacation. <laughs> oh. Two Clock Street, isn't that the prison? Yeah. Um, they had uh, an oil leak, and it's on a paved area, is my understanding, and I think it was just off of a vehicle or something. It wasn't major, but yeah, it was a something. Okay. So uh, Janet, I think, went out there to, like on her last day or something. So yeah, we're waiting for then, uh, yeah, the prison to send in their paperwork on it. And I've asked, uh, oh, phone number. Fingers are too big. No, I do have a enforcement question about Seekong Street. 144? Yeah. Now there's a whole bunch of things and of mitigating things, mitigation things that they're supposed to do while they're doing all that construction. Who goes out to make sure they're following that? That would be the agent. That we don't have? Yeah, so what I, <laughs> we can do, that, that right, so what we can do is, um, yeah, Marta being on vacation, nothing can happen this week. But uh, yeah, we'll send her something and with all the conditions and have right. her go walk it. Yeah, to make sure that, I mean, there's... And I'll copy Rich on it, so I mean, he can do it too. Um, I don't know whether it's been properly flagged for wetlands before they started. And I mean, it was... I don't know. Now that they've was, opened the road... 
the, you know, what's happened to the <clears throat> flagged areas? Have they crossed it? Have they pulled the flags? Yeah. Right. No, good point. You know, because a lot of work's been going on up there. Right. I mean, they were pulling out trailers of trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they? Yeah, they had probably two um, 18 wheelers worth of um, at least. Like 20 foot logs. Oh, yeah, at least. Yeah. I saw them stacked there. Yeah. So, and they looked pretty straight, so it was yeah. a pretty thickly forested area wherever oh, they pulled oh, yeah, them from. Oh, definitely. Oh, that, yeah. Um, Okay, yeah, let me send something to Rich and yeah, Marta. Cause to yeah, because my concern is, you know, where they're, in, where they're installing that bridge, that the three-sided bridge that needs to go through the wetlands, yep. how are they dealing with that area? You know, how are they getting around the wetlands without, and did they put up you know, the silt fence and all that yeah. stuff before. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'll i send an email to Rich. And I think uh, that's the only real project that's... Yeah, kind of a concern. And then there's not much we can do, but find out about what's going on with um, Valentine Drive. Yeah, nothing. So maybe yeah, a new age of the concern, concern well, I have. Is it's gonna, that's gonna get put on the back burner sooner or later, it's gonna be just well, yeah, I mean, you really can't do much in this time period, but yeah, I would right. say by end of March, April and all, they should be ready. Well, I mean, to I think now we should have Marty from who's going to look at it and take control of the project. Yeah. I think we just need really, truly at this point, just need a plan of who's doing what. I thought it was held up for the DEP right now, though. What's that? Yeah, we're so waiting for DEP. We're waiting for the Still DEP. waiting for DEP on yes, this? Yes, that's the problem. So if that's the case and they never went out, which it looks like the request was around November, December, yes. so they can't go out to May 15th. It's going to have to wait till then for yeah. the DEP to make a move first. Before so we if we haven't got it by now, then it's going to be at least May 15th. Yeah. They're gonna, we follow their rules. Yes. Yeah. Right. So unfortunately, yeah, they, well, it'll be drier then. <laughs> well, I mean. Oh, OK. This the uh, yeah, anything in yellow is what we've reviewed and has been amended from last year. And then the things in white is what I was working on. I think we should just take this paragraph out. The commission heard request to determine if proposed changes. Because I was going through all the minutes from the past year. Yeah. It's difficult to come up with that information. Okay, then just take it out. Um, and I was thinking of that. We should probably develop an Excel sheet or something. Where right. you can Absolutely. keep yep. track of everything that we're doing. Yep. And it will be easy to yep. get well, the Yeah, because it should almost be we acted on, yeah, so you'd know yeah. which months. Yeah. And I'm going to go in and look in Janet's computer and see if she has a hidden file somewhere yeah. that might have some of that information. But yeah, take out that paragraph. Yeah, so that was really And the, the next thing. one, too. Um, the next one, well, I, I put in this five certificates of release were issued, one enforcement owner is pending at the close of the year. So that's all accurate? That's accurate. And okay. this, um, I think it's five full and one partial at this point. Those numbers I was looking, but like I said, I went through all the minutes and. I'm, okay, so you're gonna change the six I'm to gonna, a five. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just gonna confirm that, but otherwise I think it'll be fine. So I'll get it out to you in the morning. Okay. And the thing with the Eagle Scouts that was yep. this past year. Yes. Kristen? That, okay. Yeah, and I took that information right from there. Um, the Eagle Scouts okay. um, submissions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk. It's okay. okay. That's fine. <laughs> all right. So I think it looks good. And all the members are listed on the bottom. Yeah. You want to check out your years? Let's yeah. Do you have something from the town clerk that says what our years are when they expire? Uh, not necessarily from the town clerk, but it, from the previous 
my the person that was from what from Stephanie who was before me her yeah. list it was listed on that oh okay I mean I can double the, check through, change to 24 then yeah that's what I'm because yeah, well, I, I, that's why I wanted to know if I was reappointed <laughs> did you last retire year. with Janet huh did you retire with Janet <laughs> I did before her. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll check those. Details. Yeah. <coughs> okay. But yeah, yeah. Uh, the town clerk's just, office should have. I think absolutely. we just make sure the formalities there with the select board that we're not just <laughs> add it in if someone says, I don't like this the yeah. result of the meeting and the chairman who voted wasn't even a member, a member at that point because he hadn't been... Yeah, we don't want to avoid any board. business. Yeah. All yeah. yeah. oh, right, and Fred LeVerge shouldn't be on there. Yeah. So yeah, that has to be changed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, if you would do that. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, if we're asking the select board to vote, we should also. Well, it would only be for those that need to be voted. For you and for Val. You and Al, I mean. Yeah. The Al to 2025, and, and Adam. then. Shouldn't his say 24, <coughs> Adams? Yeah, it should probably say 24. Like, yeah, because you just like got out. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's a typo. Yeah, check oh, with, no, check with the what? town clerk. There was, okay. On there the years, too. Yeah. There would, no, there was an issue that there, the way that somebody was listed had a three-year term. Yeah. And you replaced one of the persons that only had a year left. And that's what oh, I think is. That's oh, why okay. it's 2022. So what we should do is, I'd, I'd say Adam to 2025, Alan to 2025. Well, we can't do it yet. No, but I mean. Submit it to the select, select board. board, yeah. To get them all so we don't have anybody. We have to be reappointed. Yeah. Do you want to be reappointed? I don't know. <laughs> think about that. Adam? <laughs> You want to be reappointed? Yes, I definitely oh, okay. do. <laughs> well, you don't have a choice. <laughs> You've been, we know where you work. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, I'll, I'll start get a those. mean That's trace fine. of Facebook <laughs> yes. messages aimed at the water department. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, we yep. yeah, because we. I'll get that out in the morning. All right. That's fine. So, with that, I'll take a motion to close the meeting. Adam Zucker, so moved. Second. Seconded by Al Penny. Are you still on the board? I'm still here. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, the meeting is closed. Quickest meeting.